Are you interested in the struggles of our children and the struggles that they face in the American classroom each and every day? Well, let me tell you about the first season of Teach the Babies with Dr. David Johns. It examines the impact of one of the most consequential Supreme Court cases of all time. I'm talking Brown v. the Board of Education. In each and every episode, Dr. David Johns talks to incredible educators and leaders as they all grapple with the question, has Brown's promise been fulfilled? Let me tell you all something about Dr. David Johns. First of all, he's my friend. He is one of the most brilliant and revolutionary leaders of our community and society at large. And I I truly, truly mean that. This brother is deep and he is absolutely emphatically impassioned about our babies. This is a can't miss deep dive into one of the most important issues facing our country, which is teaching our babies. And y'all should know that before he was a revolutionary national leader, David John started his career where in the classroom, actually teaching the elementary school babies. I want you to like, subscribe and share. And most importantly, listen as Dr. Johns and his guest explore these questions with you. You can find Teach the Babies with Dr. David Johns wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, y'all, I'm Ebony K. Williams here, host and attorney extraordinaire. Welcome to Holding Court, where we analyze the very latest in legal headlines, the ones that got all the streets talking. You know what we do? We dig deep into how the courts impact the culture. We break it down, going straight from gavel to your news feed. And every week, we keep it 100. Right, Dustin Ross? That's right. Well, top of the day to you, Dustin Ross, my love. How are you? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling very good. This is a a, a very potent week for it, us, right? It's a very potent week. I got my head on swivel right now. That's that's how I'm doing. I got my head on swivel. I'm watching everything and everybody and just, just taking everything in, you know, because it's a lot going on, especially this week. It's I'm a lot. Good. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a little stale. But if y'all miss Dustin's Instagram on IG, just know that Dustin Ross won Halloween. That damn <laughs> was giving me life from down the street. Thank uh, you so much, my friend. Thank it you. Was it was perfect. a last minute, uh, a last minute kind of plug and play costume that worked out perfect. It so, worked yes. out perfect. Yep. Yeah. Now I'm going to get in your Thank business you. a little bit. How mm-hmm. did you create the Fendi collar? Like, how, tell me a little bit about the backstory. I carried my ass right down to Canal Street because okay. I wasn't trying to have none of the Fendi I got. Oh, well, uh, I didn't, that, well, I mean, that was not the case. Okay. We so went, I was like, you know what? Let me go get yep. some of the disposable Fendi. Got so out of here. To, uh, okay. Went down to Canal Street and got a, a scarf and got to measure. And I put a pin in the corner of my mouth and took a tape measure and, and started with the measuring wolf. shit and, and cutting and pinning. Okay. And stitch witchery in. And then I made it happen. Fabulous. Yeah. And the hat Thank too. You. Thank you. The hat was real, but I had the hat. That's oh. right. It, sometimes you just got to pick up a few items here and there. You never know when you might need it, right? So I, I, I just happened yeah. to have that beanie. And I was like, that's the same damn beanie he had on. You know, well, so I, I, it didn't work. Thank well, you, friend. Perfect. Thank you. I didn't want to see anybody you. else be Cat Williams but Dustin Ross. It was great. <laughs> It was, it was so Thank perfect. you so much, E. Thank you. It was a good time. All right. All right. So by the time y'all are listening to this, um, the election will be said and done. Oh, that just gave mm-hmm. me a mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. hey. Hallelujah. as a mother. Woo! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With that said, uh, a couple of things we want to highlight here at Holding Court. Now, I say by the time y'all are listening to this and when it drops or later, the election will be said and done. But it's very possible, Dustin Ross, that we will not collectively as a nation know the results. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we learned that the last time around. Correct. So, yeah. Correct. So what I'm about to go into on this first docket item will actually be germane. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is this issue of provisional ballot. Okay. Mm. Let's talk a, a minute, Dustin, about provisional ballots. Now, <clears throat> many of you are seeing, I hope you're seeing on social media, uh, there's a, a little, little, little mini script that says, if you are in any state in the nation on Tuesday, November 5th, and you are, for whatever the reason, turned away. The uh, polling officials say that you're at the wrong polling site. They say you don't have your proper ID. They say that they just don't see you on the voter registration roll. Or any other reason, right? I need y'all to do the following. 
tell the highest level official available to you, provide me with a provisional ballot immediately as you are required to do by law. Mm -hmm. And this is important, jurors, and give me my receipt. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Dustin, you you, you really, especially, and I, I'm, I'm going to pick on Dustin a little bit this episode because I've just decided here at Holding Court that Dustin is responsible for all of the voters of the entire state of Michigan. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 heavy hangs the head, okay? <laughs> heavy is the crown. Yeah, heavy is the crown, Flint, okay? You know. The son of yeah. Flint. I, well, I got to bring him out. Listen, mm -hmm. I, I, um, I've been constantly in communication with all my friends. Mm -hmm. All my family is voting. All mm -hmm. my family has already voted. Um, they took advantage oh, yeah, of early yeah. voting in Michigan. Yeah. Um, my family made sure that the elder members of our family have been uh, supported in that way, gotten to them to the polls to vote early. Right. It's a big deal in my family because we those kind of we those kind of black people. You have to fight for that. You know, they, they, they ingrain that in us. So. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And that's what everybody should do, no matter if you're in Michigan. Well, especially if you're in a state like Michigan, where it's so crucial and okay. critical to the outcome that we win that state and turn it blue. But everywhere, everybody yeah. that can possibly vote for Kamala Harris, OK, and Tim Walls, <laughs> and get, that, get the win where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to carry their ass to the polls. So, absolutely. oh, it's so true. It's so true. And again, you know, I've been nerding out uh, with some of my industry colleagues with these maps that let you plug and play and look mm -hmm. at different areas. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna just tell y'all, the United States Supreme Court, yes, that Supreme Court, the six-three conservative majority by a la J Donald Trump Supreme Court, has actually allowed the state of Pennsylvania to count the provisional ballots, meaning that. Uh, on election night and immediately after, those provisional ballots that Auntie E and others on social are telling y'all to mandate, to require, if you are indeed challenged when you go to vote in the Pennsylvania state, make them give you that provisional ballot, make them give you a receipt, and that provisional ballot will be counted that night, which is very, very, very important because let's be, there is a no win scenario of Kamala Harris. Uh, being victorious without the state of Pennsylvania. Like, mm -hmm. that's the end of the analysis, okay? Mm -hmm. Must win Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And also, her best path to, vic path to victory includes what we are calling the blue wall, which is Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. okay, Wisconsin, and Michigan, 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 Michigan. Yep. Michigan. And keep in mind, y'all, Trump won Michigan in 2016. Oh, yes, he did. Now, 11,000 votes, was it, Ebony? 11,000 votes in the That's a state. very small. It's minute. Yep. It's as small that's as how serious votes. it is. That's, that's how important it is that your ass cast your vote if you live in Michigan. That's Man. how important it is. We lost by 11,000 votes last 11, time. 11,000 votes. That is literally a drop in the bucket compared to how many people are in that state and yep. able to vote. You got to get to the polls. You have to. And, and, and Biden barely won it in 2020. Less than yeah, barely, barely, okay. Barely. Okay, barely, yes. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, it's, it's, it's critical. And so I'm, I'm highlighting that because a lot of the other strategy, I guess, suggestions or idea, I, ideas about her winning, they, they go through what something I've named Operation Whistle and Dixie, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the South. Mm -hmm. So that's saying that if she were to lose Michigan, Right. Mm -hmm. And we have to entertain that scenario, Dustin, because we're talking about 11,000 votes. Yeah. Anything is possible. Right. So if she were to lose Michigan, that means she would absolutely have to win one of the three following states. Arizona, which is tough for a lot mm -hmm. of reasons. Number one, their early voter turnout with Republicans is already massive. OK. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's a border state. Yep. And at best. VP Harris has what many are considering a mixed to poor record on immigration, earned or not earned, fair or not fair. That is the prevailing. That's the perception, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Arizona did something that I, I think could be harmful to the Harris campaign, which is they put abortion in its own individual capacity on the ballot, which mm -hmm. conceivably means someone can literally split the baby in terms of their vote. Mm -hmm. They can go vote for Trump and feel good about it. Because they still get to elect and opt into a state protection of abortion. Yeah. Uh, so Arizona to me is un unlikely, which then leaves us at Operation Whistle and Dixie, which mm -hmm. means that 
we are seriously considering one of the two former Confederacy states. I'm talking about Georgia and North Carolina. There you go. States who have a historic posture of saying we'd rather leave the whole fucking country and keep our slaves. Let's be they clear. Probably, little, yeah. Like I don't what? know what the, what the Confederacy was. I mean, yeah. I, I, I told you that, but I, I'm maybe this is my age showing. Maybe this is these history books showing. But some of y'all have really taken this new South shit too far. Thank God that your age and or history is showing now because that's exactly what's necessary to make people literally understand that what part. is happening. And if yeah. we live in a, in a world where Donald Trump and the people who he will empower with positions in his cabinet are mm-hmm. suggesting, invoking acts of 17 anything. That's it. 1756, 1738, hell, anything. You have to make that real in your mind so that you understand the importance of history. Because if they're going back that far and talking about bringing some laws from the fucking 1700s on the books today, that means that your ass needs to understand history as well. And you need to understand how that state, as you said, as you said, has postured itself in the past and and basically does right now, too. Y'all are are really letting this... uh, Usher and Lil John mm-hmm. and uh, Atlanta Falcon, mm-hmm. Mercedes Benz Stadium, Atlanta, fool y'all. And, yep. and shout out and, to and, Atlanta, by the way. And let me tell you what you also are doing, which Let's I have no it. problem with. You're also, we're raising children and we're, 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 we're raising teenagers and young adults who don't really give a damn about dating outside their race, don't really see and understand. Um, cultural uh, gatekeeping or or things being culturally appropriated. They don't give a fuck about none of that. And they are going towards lessening and and, and diminishing the history of what has happened with us in this country. And you lazy motherfuckers, not you, Ebony, but but a lot of these lazy motherfuckers with children are not teaching their kids the history and the historical relevance of, of things in our society. They're not teaching them that. And we're literally losing the recipe. So that's what's happening here. They don't give a fuck. Y'all ain't taking the time to teach your kids shit. And so they don't even understand these, 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 these very relevant phenomena. They don't know. They they don't get it. I'm I'm glad you're naming it because they don't know that this is the former Confederacy, nor do they know that me. And to your point, I think a lot of my peers and certainly these um, emerging parents that are younger millennials and even going into Gen Zers, right? They are, they're, they're so, they're so busy trying to get to the realized post-racialism of it all. Come There's on. mirrored in shame around the the, the gravity of the, the costs of anti right? That they are acting as if. And, and, and here at Holden Court, we don't, we don't do the acting as if part. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We, we, we act like it fuck it is. So that's, that's, it. that's it. That's it and that's all. So back to the ballot. Again, just final button on this. Um, I'm not seeing a good case for Operation Whistle and Dixie for the for for the for the yeah. Walk campaign. I'm not saying it's impossible. I, mean, I do know that Joe Biden did win Georgia by a sliver. Yeah. I think it was mm-hmm. 15,000, 16,000, mm-hmm. something like that. But mm-hmm. y'all can find a lot of the things that were at play for that that Hail Mary to happen don't apply this year. Mm-hmm. When Joe Biden won Georgia, by the way, the first Democrat to win in 30 years mm-hmm. at Georgia. A uh, couple things were going on. We had a pandemic going on. So we had massive mail-in ballots that kind of made things a little loosey-goosey. We also had a black man by the name of Reverend Warnock. That's right. On the ballot. Big in a rock. historic ele- election. Mm-hmm. Who has deep ties to Ebenezer Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. Who has deep ties to Morehouse College. Mm-hmm. who was able to motivate a particular portion of the black, particularly black base, black male base in epic proportions. We're not getting on this ticket this year, Dustin. No, he's not. You know, and, and I, I don't know why people aren't naming this. The fuck? I get optimism. I really do. But y'all acting as if these facts don't matter. And I'm telling you, they do. So this George is going to save it. Y'all gonna have to show it. Because from where I'm sitting, and so I'm gonna go back to the son of Flint. Justin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dustin. Yeah. Dustin. Yeah. I, 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 I need Michigan. I really do. And and it's not 
I, I want to be clear, Dustin, this is not me harp, chastising or harping on, because I don't think that works, and we know it didn't work for Hillary. Yeah. Because all of that, when it all was said and done, and the shit didn't turn out right, and, oh, Michigan let us down, well, no, because you didn't even go. Yeah. You didn't even campaign. Now, that is a difference, right? Um, the Vice President Harris and, and, and uh, Governor Walls have spent significant time in the state of Michigan because they realize how crucial it is. So the um, point is, we've never seen Gretchen Wilmer more. Big Gretchen has been outside. You hear yes, me, Heather? Yes. And thank God for her. But she's been outside really trying to drive that home in Michigan. So yeah, we'll see. I have, like, uh, if, if, if the people I know are any indication, you know right. what I mean? Some of whom were not happy with the choice of Vice President Harris on the ticket. But okay, they so still hearing they feel better now. Yeah, but, they feel better. They, 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 but they they're going to vote for her regardless. The people good. that I know, they good. understand the job here. They understand the assignment. And so okay. I'm hearing a lot of that. And so that's helping me to remain hopeful um, okay. while still being very real and not delusional about the gravity and the importance of, of, of Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris winning the state of Michigan and what we're up against. And I think it's very important yeah. um, that you highlight those things, Ebony, and that you are telling people, hey, no, look, this is why this is why we need to win these states. This is this is what may prevent us from winning these states. This is why you need to get your ass up and go vote or tell people that you know who are in that state to go vote. It's very important that we we share those reasons why. Because another thing that I've noticed, right? Come on. I'm the type of motherfucker who like you can you it, if I understand the totality of a situation, I don't yeah. need to be convinced that this is the right thing to do, right? I understand what's at stake in this That's that practice election. I like named a couple yeah. of with you, Dustin. And a lot so of people I just, yeah. the fact that people still have to be convinced when the but, other alternative is not enough but, of a reason but, but, why. But, baby, but, but I got to give you, I got to get baby, baby. Come on. <laughs> baby. Come on. This is I'm where about to you, your bosom. You tell me. This tell is me. you in that height of pragmatic intelligence that you occupy. And I'm not I'm not gassing you, Dustin. I, I just need you to to know yeah. that your because my one of my very, very best friends who lives in North Carolina, she's 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 with you. She's like, well, I'm like Dustin shit. I I, I say fuck him. You don't get it. You stupid, you dub. I said I I, I mean, I mean, what? Where's the lie? That there is no. This is so blatant and obvious. We're, we're gonna help women whether they like it or not. The way he said stuff, like the things that he's saying, the 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 threats, the hearkenings back to the fucking Hilt Hitler and, and and the Nazi regime. That is fucking insane, and it's something that doesn't have to be. Uh, Revealed there, there doesn't have to be a that, deep analysis have to for us I, to I get there. Like, I know, baby, but then you got, but then you got people who are not operating at your level of pragmatism, Dustin Ross, who are saying, "Oh, he just talking. Oh, he don't mean it. Oh, yeah." It. Until it's your ass that's that is in a cage somewhere. Until it's Ooh. your mama that gets thrown the fuck out the country. Or until it's real for you, and then you're gonna be looking at us with your so mouth I'm open, stupid. looking stupid, asking for help. So yeah. I just. I, I know, baby. Maybe I, maybe I know. So listen, again, by the time y'all listen to this, we're gonna know we're gonna know more than we know right now. Will we have a result? Maybe, maybe not. Well, we know for sure, per this Supreme Court, which is very good. <laughs> very good to them. A broken clock is right twice a day. That's this right. conservative leaning Supreme Court says that they are actually going to count the provisional votes coming from the state of Pennsylvania. And that is very important because Pennsylvania is the single largest battleground state in the United States. And it is pivotal. There is no scenario where she wins without Pennsylvania. OK, so now I'm going to move on. So, again, final word on that, y'all. If they turn you away on Election Day for any reason, simply say, I am asking and requiring you give me my provisional ballot as required by law. And I want my receipt. You don't remember shit else we just said in this front block. Remember that. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to move on. As most listeners know, I just recently became a mom to a sweet baby girl named Liberty. Now, it is an exciting new chapter of my life, and it's also a challenge to balance my busy schedule. And that's why I am so happy to tell y'all about Holding Court's new sponsor, Nanit. Now, Nanit Baby Monitor is the absolute best, must-have baby product. 
This baby monitor allows you to see your baby from anywhere, anytime, all straight from the Nanit app. The high-def camera captures every precious little moment, and not only do I know that my baby's safe and sound, but I also never have to miss a milestone. And speaking of milestones, Nanit allows you to track your baby's breathing, sleep patterns, and you can receive personalized insights. Now, I'm totally using this as the ultimate baby book, but moreover, the data and the crystal clear video gives me peace of mind, and that adds up for more sleep for my baby and for me. The Nanit Baby Monitor really is the MVP of baby gear. It is the one baby item that I cannot live without. And of course, we have a special offer just for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order with code DREAM20. That's D-R-E-A-M-2-0 at nanit.com now. N-A-N-I-T dot com. Young Thug is outside. Well, yeah, he is. He's outside. Just that quick. So, Dustin, I want you to tell me, because this came, this was like late breaking news. This came late in the day, right? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And everybody was surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working and I had taken a break to eat and I was scrolling my social media and I saw all these celebratory posts. His current uh, presented and chosen girlfriend, which is how we'll qualify her, right? Baby, you know, Dustin, this is what you got to help your co-host out. Who is this who we claiming right now? That's yeah. the that's the that's the cleaner way for me to say that, right? That's this who's right now. artist in her own right. She's Mariah? an artist. Her name is Mariah the Scientist. Okay, and can she you is tell an me? Artist. You, know, you know, Auntie Slow Dustin. What is mm-hmm. the scientist piece for? She actually was okay. going to school. She was going to be a scientist. Okay, and I believe I don't know if she got her degree in biology or or chemistry. One of the sciences. It was a hard but science. She was, so yes, she, she was she literally the STEM. Yeah, she's one okay. of the STEM girls. Yes. Okay. And so um, she uh, has been very excited and <laughs> very vocal about being excited. Um, and there was a lot of celebratory energy. And listen, I think we had two things to celebrate, right? Number one, it's over. We don't have to yes, sit in the circus no damn more, right? And number two, he is home. And based on what he said when he thanked the judge for her time and thanked everybody for participating in the case and the work that they had done, he was convincing to the judge and to those who heard him that he was going to do some things differently. So it'll be interesting to see. The great thing about Young Thug stepping just away from the legal piece a little bit, the yep. great thing is that Young Thug's a very gifted songwriter. He's a talented artist, very mm-hmm. talented producer, very talented songwriter. So he'll have opportunities to make tons of money, million dollar concerts every other weekend. Uh, writing and producing for other artists, you know, he'll be able to sustain himself and hopefully do some good. Because one thing about Young Thug, for all the things that he did that were not favorable, he's done a lot of work in the community, a lot of community work that is literally undeniable. So hopefully he continues doing that. And this is a good thing. So I'm happy he's home. Thug is free. And let's let's hear just because I thought it was quite amusing. Uh, mm-hmm. Look in his own words, uh, speaking directly to the judge, and 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 <laughs> was hysterical. Let's let's take a listen. I know the choice is yours; is up to you. And I hope that you allow me to go home today and and just trust in me to just do the right thing and never see you again, unless it's unless it's at a you know bar in the future or something. Just. Out of this type of situation, I promise you I won't ever be in this type of situation again. I'm I'm going away. I've learned from my mistakes. You know, I come from nothing and I've made something and I didn't take full advantage of it. I'm sorry. Uh, through these last two and a half years of my life, you are really, truly, honestly, the best thing that has happened to me because you made made everything fair for me and everybody involved on both sides, you know. Um, I'm sorry to the share, you know, everybody for just having to put extra time in. I know y'all got paid more money, but I'm sorry for y'all having to put this extra time in to be away from y'all family, you know, and I just hope that you find it in your heart to allow me to go home. Okay, and I'm sorry, Dustin, I just have to name the fact that when he he says that the the best person he's known 
in the last several years is Judge Paige Whitaker. You know, shout out to his lawyer who just really teed him up to, to hit all the okay. dollars. He's like, you got one job. He was always make her feel good. And he did. So, <laughs> look, a couple of things about this plea deal that are noteworthy. Number one, um, okay, first of all, y'all know we had just tapped into this case in depth in previous uh, the previous week's episode of Holding Court. Yeah. So it was surprising, but in a way not so shocking if you had been caught up on your episodes because we saw it going in this direction in terms of not necessarily him being immediately freed, but but either mm -hmm. his trial and or a plea because this was yes. just this was just trash. The, yeah. This prosecution walked into a, a, a trash situation that led this outcome to be predictable. Yeah. Okay. And for that reason, and that reason really alone, Dustin Ross, not really the merits of the case per se, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the facts of the case. Mm -hmm. I find this outcome to be resemblance of justice. Yeah. Because the, because the, the burden, this is a fundamental tenet that we talk about here at Holden Court, y'all. The burden of any and every prosecution is on the prosecutor. And when they fail to show up in the proper posture, when they fail to have their witnesses together, when they fail to have their theory of the case succinct and clear and concise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something like this is supposed to happen. Well, yeah, and good it's for them. Yeah. Good for them. This was a fucking mess from the start to the finish. And yep. <clears throat> again, I think that, you know, I think that everybody can just move forward now. That's what I think. I think that we could just, we're here. This is how it happened. Thug is free enough ish. So yes. let's just, yeah, That's for 15, 15 years of probation, 15 hard years of well, probation. Well, so let's, 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 let's stay on that for one minute, Dustin. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, for those of us, if you know, you know, and even if you listen to enough holding court at this point, you should know. You should know. Yeah. You should listen, keep heavy on should. Okay. <laughs> um, when you hear that the plea deal is the following immediate release for credit for time served. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're pleading guilty to drug and gun related charges. You're not pleading guilty to the highest charges, which were murder and the like, right? Mm -hmm. So you're pleading to these gun and drug charges. You're pleading no contest to the conspiracy of some of the more heavy involvement. The judge says, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you uh, the five years active sentence, but we're going to commute it to time served. So that's mm -hmm. hence him being outside immediately. But let's put some safeguards on this thing. You have to complete 15 years, not five years, not 10 years, 15 years of probation. And let's be clear, Mr. Thug. I like young thug. I just like to be fucking around y'all. <laughs> Put a handle on it. Mr. Like that's me. <laughs> Mr. Thug, if you mm -hmm. breathe wrong and I choose to violate your probation any time within that 15 years, you will get an active 20 year prison sentence on mm -hmm. site. On site. So that's what Dustin means, y'all, when he says free ish, because mm -hmm. violating probation is easy to do. Very. Easy well, know to how do. easy it is. You better ask somebody. Especially as a traveling, working musician with yeah. an out-of-state obligations, obligations, sometimes international obligations. That's a lot of checks and balances when mm -hmm. it comes to making sure everything you do is cleared by, you know, your probation officer and and above board. So there's a lot of meticulous, you know, attention to detail that needs to be to be taken here, but it's doable. He can do oh, it, and too, we're better too. out than in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Again, so though, Dustin, you and this pragmatism, because I know that, that if this was Dustin Ross, which you would never would be, you know, it's 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 no cutting corners. You you would never give him a reason. But I just can only speak on my experience working with some 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 solid citizens who were on this probationary track. Dustin, you'd the be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Listen, okay, so let's go through some of the restrictions. First of all, per his probation. He's actually barred from the city of Atlanta. Let's start with that. I think it's 10 years or something. He's actually years. Not, yeah, he is not supposed to be in Atlanta. Now, personally, I think this is great for him. Mm -hmm. Because if the nature of the charge has any truth to it, then the place where he is most likely destined to end up in criminal activity would be Atlanta. Would be Atlanta. So if part of your mandate is to operate outside of the Atlanta jurisdiction, that could be good for him. 
Mm -hmm. Obviously good for the Atlanta community because if, 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 if to the extent you still may be a menace, this is protecting of the community and also keeps you in a posture where you are disconnected from any folks that might get you caught up. Yeah. Now we know his father came out and said he doesn't like it, but uh, to hell with that. Here we are. So yeah. one, one of the conditions, he's not supposed to be in Atlanta for 10 years. Also, no contact with any affiliated gang members. Same, same logic here, right? To the extent there was, is truth to you being a part of this criminal enterprise, leave all those people alone. Again, it makes Atlanta safer and it protects Young Thug in his probationary position. He also must perform many, many, many hours of community service, including doing presentations to community groups and children against gang violence. So they basically turned him into an ambassador of sorts against this, just this type of activity. Mm -hmm. And just so y'all know, this ain't just Ebony or Auntie E saying it. Judge Whitaker herself said, and I quote, there better be no violations. But if there are any, you're coming back to see me. That's it. That's it. It's very plain. Very, very simple. Plain. So hopefully we don't, he don't see her no more. I hope that's the last time they ever see each other. Listen, I'm sure he gonna does be, too. It's going to be, remember, Dustin, you remember that game Operation when we were kids? Yes. <laughs> yeah. you, you already know I was going with it, right? You better you stay be clear of the sides, boy. You better try your best to get that in there. Don't get on that. <laughs> Yeah, I think he can do it. I'm being hopeful. I'm being happy. I think this is a, a week for us to hold on to hope. And so yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm very uh, optimistic this week in okay. particular. And um, I'm hoping the best for Thug because I want some more of the music. You know, I love his music. I know. Well, it. listen, I, I appreciate just his artistry as well. Like yeah. his, those, um, you know, talents, creatives that just challenges the aesthetic challenge yeah and I, and I do very much appreciate that about yeah him and his for impact sure. um, for sure me up looking up sir and that's he's it. very nice too I, I met him at a versace show during fashion week here in new york mm. and i was i was on a high literally i had just met mary j blige this is one of the first times oh I had my met god her. Oh, okay so and this was the night of can we just call this the night of favor this I'm, i mean like ebony it, it was going down and so i literally turned around y'all know how Dustin look off mary j y'all know how Dustin look off the queen so, so the i you really couldn't tell me shit at this point and i don't even ah. really remember being feeling in my body at the point i was so excited but i turned around and young thug was standing right there and we started <laughs> talking we struck up a conversation we were cracking jokes. He had a, he had really good energy. He was funny and he was super nice. Uh, wanted to take a picture, like just really, really cool. So I I'm bet happy did. that Thug is free. Hey, 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 hey. I bet he did. <laughs> good for good for I'm happy young Thug is free. <laughs> <laughs> he was okay. very nice and I'm happy that he's home. So free good. Thug is free. We said it until it was backwards. Free Thug, now Thug is free. So Thug is free. And we're yep. going to see how much you want to stay free by his action. Yep. And hopefully Ryan Murphy's team has already rung his bell. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like that's yes. Ryan Murphy and the Ryan Murphy uh, company, Ryan Murphy people. And I want him Ronnie to tap to that. Is it, is it Steve Carnell? Who was the um, showrunner on? Oh, from um, Pose. What's uh -huh. his name? Uh -huh. Can I think Canal, Steve, Steven Canal, Canal. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to him. Very talented. But Very yes. Talented. And that's the thing. When, when we, we, we fucks with Ryan Murphy hard, but when you got to tell these black stories, I need you to go ahead and tap into that black yep. cultural competency link. Yep. And Steve is the guy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's time. I want the, the American crime story of the, oh, uh, the YSC. Yes, okay. baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all these judges when it's, oh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. The witnesses, you know what I'm saying? Oh, who going to play, who going to play uh, Fonnie Willis? Oh, actually, I'm going to tell you who. Uh, she going to be, man, I'm going to name her. I don't give a damn. Jerrica Richardson. So she is in my Lynx chapter. She okay. is my school war. And she actually fucking looks like funny. I'm going to text you yeah. out for Okay, send me your pictures. She, she works for the Urban League. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to the Urban League. You know, the Urban, the Urban League. League. Yeah, the she Urban League has been around for a long time. That's right. But no, but I saw on Jerrica. She actually be getting mad. She'd be at regional conference and national conference and shit. She'd be like, D.A. Will. And she'd be like, no, bitch. I'm actually that ain't me. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it might be in this yeah. program. She got a little part in the uh, uh -huh. scene. 
situation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She gonna give uh-huh. you the rebel on. That's yeah. right. She give it. So right. she, let's play Fonny Willis. Well, okay. let's do it. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> shout out to shout out to Sarah Jericho. Okay. Uh yeah, we're gonna move on to a docket item that I, I think you guys are going to find very intriguing. Very intriguing. Cam Newton. Of course, I'm talking about former yeah, yeah, yeah. Carolina Panthers uh quarterback, former NFL uh MVP player of the year, Heisman trophy winner. Y'all know Cam. Okay. Cam is on record now admitting that during his current relationship, y'all know he's with um Jasmine Brown, the comedian, mm-hmm. uh, and they have a child together. She ha- is the mother of Cam's self-proclaimed eighth child. Uh, mm-hmm. So he has five children with his first girlfriend, Kia Proctor. He has two children with his subsequent young lady. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with her name, but there's two children there. And then mm-hmm. he has eighth child with Jasmine Brown. And Cam and Jasmine have been together, I think, since around 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, public relationship. And Cam is on record in this recent interview with Corey Holcomb on his platform, on Cam's platform, Fucky Fridays. And I want to start by saying to jurors and to Dustin, I actually watched this entire interview all two and a half hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have to say. You have an informed opinion. I have a fully, and I think that's important. It is critically important. And more people should start doing that. Yeah. A lot of people are just watching the little clips on social um, shout out to Jasmine Brand. Shout out to Hollywood Unlocked. Um, and mm-hmm. that clip is fine. But when you watch the entirety of the interview between Cam and Corey, uh, I think you have a lot more appreciation for the greater issues. Mm-hmm. That play. Okay. Yep. Anyways, in the clip that y'all are seeing, Cam is saying, he's admitting to Corey that, yes, he has been in this relationship with his girlfriend, Jasmine Brown, and also he has had sexual relations with other women. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people felt a way about this a lot. And we'll get into that, Dustin. Let me just start with checking in with you. When, when you saw the headline, because I'm mm-hmm. not going to assume that you sat around and spent your quality time watching this two and a half mm-hmm. hour conversation. I did week. not. But for my own for reasons, that was more of a Corey Holcomb thing for me than uh-huh. it was a Cam Newton thing. Yeah. I used to be a huge fan of Corey Holcomb's comedy. And I yeah. still think that he's very funny. But he is like egregious grossly yeah. jump to shark into homophobia, misogyny. Well, it's like, domestic violence. That, that pushing mean, domestic, your all of that. that all of sure. that shit. And so I just, it, it's not even funny to me anymore. He takes, he gets, goes after low hanging fruit and he's That's too right. fat to yes. not be funny. So I don't understand why, you know, normally a fat motherfucker like that, off, baby, you, know, that kid, he, you know, they funny. So, but, so for me, you know what I mean? I just back back a little bit from all things Corey Holcomb related. Still yeah. think he's funny, just think he's not funny enough. And I think that he has some really serious shit he needs to work out. So that's why I didn't watch it yet. But I am open to it, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say about what they said. So, Well, let me start with my why. Let's start mm-hmm. with that. Right? Why in mm-hmm. the world? With all that's going on in the world, a presidential election, a new baby, um, got a house on the motherfucking market. This is all my life. This is my life, y'all. Mm-hmm. But why in those circumstances would I take two and a half hours to mm-hmm. watch this entire conversation between Cam Newton and Corey Holcomb? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's the same reason that I watched a significant portion of the RNC. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I actually think it is very, very, very important, Dustin, and I'm not laughing right now. Mm-hmm. It's very important to understand the thinking of all sides. I really do. I agree 100%. Yeah. So as a woman who has the privilege of a microphone mm-hmm. and the privilege of public positioning. That's right, right. I actually think it's a little bit my job. A little to, bit. Uh, to, to know what's going on. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Mm-hmm. A little bit. A little bit. Not every time, but on this one, it just, you know, something called. Let's say I was called to the conversation. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I thought it was very important when I heard, I'm going to get to the cam, but very specifically when Corey Holcomb said directly, and I appreciate direct um, expression. I really do. Tell no me, matter what it is, just keep well, it real with me. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'd rather know than not know. 
Exactly. And I'm going to say one more time because there's a lot in that. Mm-hmm. I'd rather know than not know. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all would rather not know. Now, you might not even be aware that you would rather not know. But some of y'all out there living life in a posture. Moving like you'd rather not know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. AKA dumb and stupid. Go ahead though. AKA want to stay stuck in my delusion. Want to stay in my fantasy. Want to stay in my preferred version of the story. Mm. But that's another story for another day. I'm about to get my get in my preacher bag on that. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, let me let me come back. Let me come back. Okay. So when Corey Holcomb, so by the way, let me just start with this. I am not, and, and, and for those of y'all that don't know Dustin enough. <laughs> Dustin is literally an artist. He's a comedic artist. He, so when he's talking about Corey Holcomb and he's offering a critique of sort of his comedic positioning, he's talking about a peer. He's talking yeah. about an industry peer. I'm yep. not, a, clearly. So, so Corey Holcomb, I'm just sitting in a posture of spectator. You know? For sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I didn't really know a lot about Corey Holcomb at all. You know, I'll be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um, and I was introduced to Corey recently. It was maybe six months ago. I saw a viral clip of him with Kendra G. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out, to, shout out G. to Kendra G. Yes. Well, I enjoy Kendra. Um, I was able to mm-hmm. meet her in person through a mutual friend in Chicago a couple of years ago. And, you know, I, I, I have pleasant deals. Exchanges with her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just that close, but pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. And I really hated this, this clip I saw mm-hmm. of Kendra mm-hmm. in, at a radio station. I think it might have even been her radio show. And Corey was there and Corey says this, I'm paraphrasing, but Corey and Kendra sitting side by side. And for whatever reason, Kendra decided to go natural that day in terms of her look. Mm -hmm. Um, She didn't have any makeup. She just kind of had a like a light unit situation. And I wouldn't have done that because a motherfucker like Corey, as I've seen, he needs a full beat because you need to mush him. Just, just the mush. He needs to be in mush posture. Okay. So you need to get all the lashes, all the contour. You need to see a full motherfucking aesthetic goddess because otherwise you think you can talk to me exactly exactly <laughs> exactly and i'm exactly. using his words and i'm yep. using his words okay so anyways picture it kendra sitting there looking just you know not na- na- in her natural feminine state here mm-hmm. looking ridiculous and he says this to this woman he says see that's why i don't like y'all radio girls when y'all got y'all little jobs because when y'all got y'all little jobs i can't fuck you this is this is what Corey said. He says, and it is when you lose your jobs, when you are unemployed, that I prefer you. Because, and he says, you know, to Kendra, probably joking, probably half not. You know, I've been trying to fuck you for a long time. Can't get to the draws because you got your little radio job, you got your little bag up, you got your little situation. But oh, when y'all lose y'all's jobs, that's where I'm successful. So fast forward. This is what he said, and that's up to I said, that is a radical piece of honesty there. So I fast forward to the Cam interview, Dustin, and he says in the interview, I'm paraphrasing, but not by much. He says, Cam, I'm in a good situation. I make enough money. He said, I'm not, I'm not filthy rich, but I'm rich enough to where I have access. I own fast cars and I have access to a good amount of women in poverty. And my life is good. And so even Cam is shaking his head like Dustin Ross is shaking his head right now as we record this. Cam said, oh my God. Okay, I said, tell me more about these women in poverty. And the man was very honest and he was very direct, Dustin Ross. He said, listen, when a woman is in poverty, that means she's in what? A deficiency. Mm -hmm. And I can help you with your little, that's what he said, little deficiency, which had me intellectually wondering, well, what if it's a big deficiency? I guess you can't help with anyway. But I was thinking too hard. I was thinking too hard. I'm going to get back to it. He's like, I can help you with your little deficiency. But when a woman makes her own money, when a woman got money, and nobody, by the way, defined money. That's another issue I have with this whole conversation, Dustin Ross, because we're talking about money and no one's defining. What is a little money? Well, what you can look at money? him and tell what it is. You can look at him and tell that it's just enough to satisfy a feeling of or to create a feeling of accomplishment for him. Obviously, he still looks broke, right? No, so I mean, he, 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 still, I mean, he said it. Just so you know, he named it. He, he said, what I can provide is some outlet Jordans for your children. This is what he, the man said. He said it. He said, well, he, woman, this is a recurring thing for him. He has, okay. um, he does like parody songs and parody music on his show, which is usually hilarious. Uh, but I remember several songs where the lyrics were about 
dropping a woman back off to break, picking a woman up and taking her basically on a nice day, then dropping her back off to poverty, using yes. the word poverty specifically. Yes. Um, that's a, a run, that's a trope that he has. Uh, it's a, it's a running joke okay. that he has, which okay. uh, it, that's not how, how you make self-deprecating humor. But once again, we talking about, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't, I so, don't know how much it's rooted in you. I mean, I, obviously it, I know it's, it's not, yeah. it's, 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 it's real because it's he is. Some were pay off. But it, this is also like most great comedians rooted in his life trajectory. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, and he said it. He said it. I won't fly spirit. I, Corey Hope, I don't fly spirit. But I'll put a bitch on spirit mm -hmm. because she ain't been nowhere and spirit is for poverty bitches. That's what he said. This ain't me saying it. This is what Corey Hope said, y'all. Watch the interview <laughs> because I, I got a lot of information, Dustin. Yeah. So I say all that to say while I know that my particular kind of um, framing of mm -hmm. insisting on being a woman of high income, and I make no apologies about it. No, I'm you make strides sure toward it. it. I yeah. stay in, in it. Yeah, 10 to 20 now. Actually 20. And Bank Liberty will also be in high income as long Forever. as I have something to say about it. As long as I'm her uncle, yes. That's it. Oh, yeah. listen, baby. Baby. Okay. So anyway, so so Corey said, I like a woman in poverty because I get to have my needs met. That's what he said. He said, because a woman will make a little money, because Cam said, what about a woman with a little money? So I can't do nothing with her. Because if you got if you got a little bit of money of your own, you think you can talk to me. And I don't want you on He said he said, oh. he said, because I need you to know that you can't talk to me. I'm gonna get down how I get down. Cause this is framing, by the way, y'all, context for what for the Cam Jasmine of it all. Mm -hmm. So Corey is saying that I have a rotation of bitches. I have a community of poverty bitches that create the community of women for Corey Holcomb. This is this man's framing. And I like it that way because I get my needs met, which my need is cemented in multiple women. And he's saying any man that says I'm just with one woman is a liar or a simp. And I know, so he, he actually is baiting Cam at this point. This is important because if you didn't see the full thing, you might just think Cam just came out of the blue and said, yeah, I'll be fucking bitches on my girlfriend. That's how mm -hmm. it happened. Mm -hmm. Corey baited this man for mm -hmm. a segment, a whole segment. He's framing it from real men like us. And he kept saying, like us, Cam, men with means, men with money, men that are in boss posture. This is, I see, y'all got to, sometimes you got to watch what the motherfucking other side is saying. Yeah, you do. We you saying have, all to, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to know. Oh, I got to, I got to know, you know, Dustin, you know, I got to know because, you know, yes. I'm about to say some bus driver shit and I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he's saying, you know, men like us, Cam, we know that we got to have our bitches mm -hmm. and we know that we need to have multiple bitches because we deserve multiple bitches because we bring home the bag. We are the men in the financial providing posture. We are the ones that will take you to the Gucci outlet. That's what he said. That's what he's saying. Cam says. Well, what I will say is I'm not going to say I agree with you, but I will say that in my relationship with my lady, Jasmine, one thing I love is that we can tell each other the full and complete truth. And part of that full and complete truth is at various times in the relationship, especially in the beginning, yes, I had sex and sexual dealings with other women. And as opposed to just deading the relationship, cutting me off, nye, 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 to the point where I have to mush her against the window, which was Corey's advice. Mm -hmm. By the way. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said, if you, don't, if you don't at times have to exert your physical dominance, this is what the man said, by pushing your woman's head against the car window, something's wrong in your relationship and she won't really respect you because you haven't established yourself as a dominant man. That's what she said. Go ahead. And he can try to frame that shit as a joke all he wants, he means that because he Cam is a person. Him, Dustin, Cam said, is that a joke or is that not a joke? He said, you ain't, here was his answer. He said, you ain't had to push a bitch head against the window. No, because he gets bitches since that's what we're calling him for the sake of this conversation. No, he hasn't had to. Corey Holcomb, <laughs> you don't get bitches. And okay. you just told the truth about it. And I'm not, I don't call women bitches. I'm speaking no, to because I'm talking to him. Yeah, you don't get you. no bitches. So you have to resort to you don't have to resort to these things, but you think that you have to resort to all these extreme viewpoints or whatever to try to 
configure a method to get women to be, be attracted to you or to do things that well, to be dependent, feel be, they're attracted to be, be. Well, that's one of the things that he has to do. He has to configure yes. himself in a way where women will be dependent upon him to get them to be, to do things that are signals of them being attracted to him. Other men ain't had to do that. So, and, and, and that's on you that, that you feel like that's the only way that you can get women. It's so unhealthy. And the fact that he is spewing it out, sometimes people can know that they have a problematic um, viewpoint. They can have a viewpoint that's rooted in all sorts of unhealthy things but they just want other people to feel the same feeling that they feel. So they throw right. it out there it's, in the it's field. Like, who's going who's gonna to tell Corey? It's a dog whistle. You know what I'm really? saying? And so, so that, like, you're trying to find, you're trying to be validated through They're trying other to find men. camaraderie. That's what it is. Yeah, doing. find camaraderie. Let's just name it. Now, we all know what it is. Let's just name it. Corey, you are fat and medium ugly. Yeah. You are fat and medium ugly. Yeah. And by my estimation, and I don't really often spend time counting people's money because I goddamn sure don't want you counting mine. But let's just yeah. let's just do a little rough tally. Maybe at best, at best, you somewhere in the 750 to 1.5 million a year range. Mm -hmm. And I doubt you had much more than that. I just doubt mm -hmm. it. At Based best, of, like you said. What, like, that's what I said. Heavy on at best. Because as he as Corey will tell you, he's not getting the Netflix deals. He's mm -hmm. not getting the multiple episodics at BET. You know, yeah, he, I wonder I, why. No, he know why. He know why. He I said it. Why. He said it. You know, I, I have a certain brand. I have a certain delivery. And the, and the streets make, give me enough support financially to where I can live my life with my fast cards and my poverty bitches, mm -hmm. putting them on spirit and going to the Gucci outlet. That's enough for Corey Hochul. And that's fine. That's why he won't he, go any further. He, he doesn't work on his craft. He sees right. complacent. Well, he's, he he, yeah, he's done. He, he, been, he said, I'm done with it. I'm done growing. Okay. So therefore, you don't have any business, Mr. Holcomb, equating yourself to the positioning of Cam Newton, who's got well over 20, 30, 40, 50 million, okay? Mm -hmm. His cash, mm -hmm. his cash we're talking about, and businesses. A man who just signed a new ESPN deal. Mm -hmm. A man who, first of all, even with whatever that hair situation is, Cam mm -hmm. is a beautiful man. I mean, I don't care. Yeah. He he's just better he, looking than Corey Holcomb for the sake of this conversation. For the sake of this conversation, he's eons better yeah. than Corey yeah. Holcomb. And he's fit. So just, just off of the aesthetic and the fun and the purse, you two are not even peers, Corey. So stop Cam. At all. Well, right. So no, Cam does not have to do that. Cam will not do that. And Cam said flat out, nigga, you crazy. Because yep. if I were to do that, I would be arrested. Yep. I was canceled, and the and I have too much to lose to do some dumbass shit like that. Yeah. As most listeners know, I just recently became a mom to a sweet baby girl named Liberty. Now, it is an exciting new chapter of my life, and it's also a challenge to balance my busy schedule. And that's why I am so happy to tell y'all about Holding Court's new sponsor, Nanit. Now, Nanit Baby Monitor is the absolute best must-have baby product. This baby monitor allows you to see your baby from anywhere, anytime, all straight from the Nanit app. The high-def camera captures every precious little moment, and not only do I know that my baby's safe and sound, but I also never have to miss a milestone. And speaking of milestones, Nanit allows you to track your baby's breathing, sleep patterns, and you can receive personalized insights. Now, I'm totally using this as the ultimate baby book, but moreover, the data and the crystal clear video gives me peace of mind, and that adds up for more sleep for my baby and for me. The Nanit Baby Monitor really is the MVP of baby gear. It is the one baby item that I cannot live without. And of course, we have a special offer just for our listeners, get 20% off your first order with code DREAM20. That's D-R-E-A-M-2-0 at nanit.com now. N-A-N-I-T dot com. All right. So now with all that said, let's get to Jasmine. So Jasmine says in response to Cam publicly admitting, yes, I fuck other women in my relationship and I'm able to go to my girlfriend and talk about it. That's the nature. That's the gist y'all need to know that went down. So Jasmine responds 
which I think was a mistake. I'll get to why later on the mm-hmm. IG. And she says this, I'm going to quote it. Child, here come the just checking on you DMs. I'm fine. Trust me. I know who and what my nigga is. Mm-hmm. Ain't no secrets or surprises. He can talk to me about anything. Now, people were checking on her, quote unquote, and they were being messy, of course. But they were checking on her, Dustin. By most people's standards, to have your man, your partner, your boyfriend publicly go on record and say, yeah, I'll be fucking other bitches, would be embarrassing. Mm-hmm. It would be embarrassing. Mm-hmm. It would be hurtful. It would cause, I'm going to use a legal word, distress. Mm-hmm. So it got me to thinking. Again, shout out to Ashley Hobbs, super producer. I would have never put it on the And she put it on the docket. I said, well, let me, let me, <laughs> let me stand in the challenge of this. Uh, can you sue somebody for just downright embarrassing you? Mm. And the answer, jurors, is yes. Yes, you can. Really? Really, Abby? Yeah, so let me break this down. Let me get in my bag right quick. Let me, as, as one of these new content creators, uh, I'm not even going to give him the satisfaction of naming his name, but let me cook for a minute. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun today. Mm. Let me talk mm. for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, jurors, you can't sue someone simply for embarrassing you. Let me tell you how to do it. It is a tort claim. It's a civil action. So it's not criminal, but it is a civil action. You can sue them in civil court. And the claim is the intentional infliction of emotional distress. Let me run down the elements that you would have to prove to collect on this claim. A, you got to prove intent or recklessness. So let's go back to the cam scenario, Dustin. Mm-hmm. Do I think he intentionally, like, let me just fuck this bitch up? Not necessarily. Do I think he was reckless? Yes. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think that there is a lack of consideration at this point coming from Cam Newton, not just in this episode of Funky Fridays, but in many episodes of Funky Fridays where I get it. And I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a personal question in a minute, Dustin. Okay. For all of us that, that, that are, podcasters and sit in a microphone posture um, and often do what we're supposed to do, which Mm -hmm. is some level of vulnerability, Mm -hmm. some Mm -hmm. our actual lived experiences. But the issue is when you do that, when when it's another person, right? When you, when you're in a public relationship and you're doing all that sharing and caring and whatnot, that other person is impacted. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a strong legal argument that Cam Newton has often been reckless, absent of proper, reasonable consideration of the feelings and impact of Jasmine Brown. So okay. I, I think the reckless element is met. Let's move on. You got to prove also number two, extreme or outrageous conduct that goes beyond the bounds of decency. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think this is satisfying. I think most people, not all people, but I think most people would say that absent a very clear declaration of, oh, we in an open relationship, neither one of us is operating on monogamy. That's not being said. What is being said is that y'all are in a relationship. We've heard nothing about Jasmine being permitted to operate sexually outside the relationship. So I don't think most of us see it as open. Most of us see it as a traditional relationship where Cam is routinely Stepping outside of it sexually. And most people, Dustin, by a reasonable man standard, and that's the legal standard, a reasonable man standard, reasonable okay. woman standard, would we'll say mm-hmm. that is outside the bounds of decency. If you are in a committed public relationship and you are constantly having sex with someone else or even um, more than once and talking about it publicly, that is beyond decent. So I think that that element is satisfied. Let's go to number three, causation. The mm-hmm. defendant. Behavior is linked to the plaintiff's stress. Okay, the fact that this woman has to constantly run to Instagram feels the need to to quiet the peanut gallery. I know who he is. I know what it is. And yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> you could argue that that is indicative of her stress. Yeah. He's trying to get in front of it, but you're already behind it. I think most of us would say that but for, this is the but for test, also a mm-hmm. legal mechanism, right? But for Cameron Newton getting on a microphone and publicly confessing 
his own sexual misconduct in this, be, uh, you know, outside the relationship, not criminal, but misconduct in terms of the relationship. That is the cause of Jasmine Brown's embarrassment. Undisputable. So final episode, uh, final element, severe emotional distress, also known as mental anguish. I'm going to say you keep coming on Instagram talking about this shit. It tells me that you are in some level of distress. You are continuing to make videos about cooking breakfast and submitting it. I'm going to just go ahead and say that most people looking at it would recognize hurt, harm, yep. and those are the things required. So I think that she actually would have a great case if she so chose to bring a literal civil lawsuit against Cameron, I think it's Jarrell, Newton, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the emotional distress, the intentional infliction of emotional dist distress. Now, let me tell you where she's actually fucking up her own case, jurors. Because sometimes we talk ourselves out of a bag. We when talk she ourselves out. She know what she's dealing with and all that other shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you start saying, I know what it is, I know what it ain't. I'm cool. Because that's what you're doing. You go into the Instagram and you say, you know what? I know y'all concerned about it. Y'all bothered by it. I'm telling you, I'm not bothered by it. I'm cool with it because I know what it is and I know what it ain't. And I'm okay. That is where Cam's lawyer, if this were to go to trial, would say, well, Your Honor, even if my client's actions were outside the of decency, even if my client was reckless in his behavior, there's no real harm. Because the defendant, I mean, the plaintiff herself has said she's not bothered. She's not anguished. She's not embarrassed. And she's not distressed. So, Ms. Jasmine, in your in your 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 hurry to act in defense of this man or whatever, or a safe face or whatever your your goal here is, just know that you could inadvertently be prohibiting your legal rightful outcome. Yep. Just a little something to put y'all on. Just a little game for y'all this week. Right. So get your ass off the internet and, and get it right. If you want to make some noise and get your get back in that way, you don't uh -huh. do it by trying to save face on the internet. You do it by filing a complaint, you know, that you've been embarrassed. Okay. And, and there's been some causation, God damn it. You why, know did I, you you that, why did I why did I see a, a, a cute little uh commercial with both of us on? Let's Have do you it. Been embarrassed by your motherfucking man recently on social media. Well, bitch, if let me so. tell you something. If <laughs> you so, okay. Guess what so we got for you? Call here at Holden Court. That's 1 right. One eight hundred Williams and Ross. That's right. What? That's right. Let's go. On, let's go on and, and and get all the legalese done now, so we can make sure that we got that. <laughs> okay. If you are a friend that has been subject to continual fucking embarrassment by these. Yep. And that was what the comments said, right? All the comments and this Jasmine Cam post said, what a motherfucker is going to do every time is embarrass you. Absolutely. Every single time. And he did, but, you know, and I, and the, the thing I don't understand, I would never say anything personally. I would never issue a response to any of that. What do you think? Do you think someone's going to walk away from your post saying, oh, I know the nigga I deal with. Do you think people are going to walk away from that and say, oh, you know what? Well, yeah, she, she, no, she's not embarrassed. She, she's got it figured out. Like, she's right. a, no what? one's going to you're have that takeaway. Like that. Shut up. Yeah, nobody's doing that. They already yeah. think you're stupid. They already think you've been embarrassed. They already think that you are in this for whatever reason you have. I'm, I'm going to tell honest. you what it gave. I'm going to tell you what it really gave. It gave medium poverty. Mm -hmm. Medium poverty. It yep. gave medium poverty. It yeah. said to me, if I didn't know before, and again, I'm not that familiar with Jasmine Brown, but I know enough to know that unlike some of these other baby mamas and women, she had a ha had and has a career. Yep. She had and has some form of earning income in her own capacity. Yep. So the fact that you are publicly making space for this in this very overt way tells me it's medium poverty, that there yep. is some level of deficiency, lifestyle deficiency. Let's yep. just just be grown about it. Yep. There is a level of lifestyle that you cannot afford for yourself, Miss Jasmine Brown. And therefore, you have decided you've run the numbers, literally, and you've done the math. And you have said whatever Cam Newton provides that supplements what you can provide, 
takes you from medium poverty, and I mean this on her, you know, relative, because mm-hmm. I, I don't by any stretch think this woman is looking for her next meal. Not at all. No, no, no. Not at all. That's what I'm saying. So this is relative, y'all. And we each get to decide what our poverty, medium poverty, or high earning positioning looks like. What the threshold is. That's yeah. it, there. Yeah. If you don't really hear what this episode is putting down, y'all missing it. Because this is some grown ass life assessment. This is game. Game. Yeah. Game by the pound. That's right. Okay. So Jasmine has said, I, I've decided. I'm in a posture of medium poverty and I want to go to a higher level of lifestyle and whatever Cam can give me that I, I've just decided or, and or accepted that I cannot give myself makes it worth it to me to deal with whatever he's going to do. And that is Corey Holcomb's whole point, right? Just bringing it full circle. Corey is saying for whatever you can provide, sir, Get you a woman that cannot provide the same and you will be able to do whatever the fuck you want to do and she can't talk to you. That's wild. So ladies, 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 I'm not telling you what lifestyle you need to see, but I am telling you that we are fortunate and that men, some men, many men are being really, really honest about it. Really honest. It's the perfect filter, right? No men's filter. You can't just... Filter through your niggas that way. Anybody that has this sort of um, illogical, <laughs> unreasonable thought, uh, you can filter them out of your life. That's they say it's the ultimate filter. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, mm-hmm. it. That's it. That's all. Okay. So y'all, y'all, we we gave y'all the game. We told you what to do. Decide how you want to be in medium poverty, full poverty, no poverty, and act accordingly. That's mm-hmm. it. And if you want to file a claim, stay tuned for Williams and Ross. <laughs> get that 800 number get that 800 number that's right don't pick up the claim before we can get to it by running your motherfucking ass to social talking about you're okay. uh, I'm all right no bitch you're not okay and you're not all right okay yep. now just real quick note um i'm not gonna call this justice i am gonna call it a point of accountability we were all relatively pleased to see finally 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 one of the police officers who was responsible for the killing of brianna taylor has been convicted. After um, being acquitted at the criminal state level, he has been convicted at the federal level um, Mm -hmm. on the civil side of the violation of this woman, this American citizen, civil and human rights. This officer, Hankinson, 48 years old, has been convicted by a jury of 12, found guilty, 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 guilty of violating her civil rights when he shot 10 times into the home of Breonna Taylor. Of course, y'all remember this was doing a very botched, poorly executed, I would say erroneous, failed warrant in the 2020 drug raid that left her dead. Um, This was just absolutely tragic. And this is the first actual conviction. There was a plea deal made earlier where somebody pled guilty, but this was a jury saying, no, sir, your actions were out of bounds. They were in violation of this woman's civil rights, and we're going to hold you accountable, guilty. Uh, Brianna Taylor's mother, Ms. Tamika Palmer, celebrated the verdict. She said this. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of patience. It was hard. But the jurors took their time to really understand that Brianna deserved justice. Yes, um, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to relitigate it, but just know that this is a step in the right direction. Um, mm-hmm. Hagan was one of four officers who has been charged federally by the U.S. Department of Justice in 2022 with vi- and that shout out to Mayor Garland. Because he, again, right. going back to the top of the episode, this is why who is in that White House, who they appoint to be the head of the attorney general's office, the head of the Department of Justice, fucking matters. Because there won't be no justice if y'all let Donald Trump's fat ass get in there because he wants police. He wants full immunity. Full for the immunity. Police. Full so immunity. none of this will be happening. And, and, and you niggas don't care. Until it's one of your niggas, until it's somebody you know and it was important to you that was harmed by the police and their violence. Until then, it's not an issue for you. Mm-hmm. And I, it pisses yeah. me yeah. off. So I'm not, and let me get off my soapbox, but no, you understand. No, what's no, going on. no, no, it's warranted, Dustin, because what we do know is Jeff Sessions would never. Ever. We, William Barr would never. Ever. Ever. And, th- and that's who Trump had at the AG's office. So, so if, 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 if any of this feels good to you, that Breonna Taylor, who who was killed, 
unjustifiably in mm-hmm. her fucking home by the state police of Missouri, if that bothers you, know that what you do on November 5th matters. Mm-hmm. Know that who you cast that ballot for or choose to sit on your couch for, yeah, I'm going to say it, matters. All right, that's it. I'm, I'm off my soapbox too, Dustin. That's yeah. it. All right, y'all. So by, like I said, by the time y'all listen to this, we going to know more than we know at the time of recording. <laughs> yep. We gonna know a little something. We gonna we gonna and we listen, Dustin. We gonna see a little something too. That's right. That's right. All right. I'm I'm not gonna say much more because I'm done with it. What you want the people to do, Dustin? Read your. T- I want this nigga to stop drilling outside my window. First of all, <laughs> y'all hear that on his mic? It's so tennis. irritating. But anyway, I also want uh, the people to read their terms and conditions, please. Please. So we don't have to read them for you. We tired of being the only informed opinions. Y'all niggas need to start watching the full video and reading the full terms and conditions. That's yeah, what look, we want. Heavy on Thank informed opinions. Yeah. Yes. All right. We'll see y'all next week. Holding Court is produced by Uppity Productions. Host and executive producers here, Ebony K. Williams, yours truly, and the Dustin Ross. Executive producer in Dossie McCraw. Our senior producer, Ashley Hobbs. Creative consultant, Jay Kleinberg. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any and everywhere you get your podcast.